Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So we left off in part one of the reloading video on we had resized this dot or this brass from my 6.5 Grindle, and we also just realized that I did not turn the volume off on my phone. Boom. Okay. All right. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. From part one of the how I reload. We're gonna go do a part two now. We're gonna show you how to finish up this Grindle brass. And so I actually added a step we're gonna go over later, but I, I, I annealed this brass, so I fired the um, case mouth of this brass. We'll go over that later, but we're not gonna dwell on that. Um, I think it's gonna give more consistent loads. But anyways, so we used this press. We used this particular die here. We punched out the primer pocket, and we resized this to within SAMI specifications. And so from there, we need to measure it because when you, when you shoot a case like this, it expands and it extends up a little bit. And we are just outside of specs. I trim all my brass for Grindle at 1.510. All right, and so I have this Frankfurt Arsenal precision trimmer already chucked up, ready to go. I like trimmers that can go inside of drills. Um, you see, that's it, you just put the brass in. And so I, I'll have a video out in a week or so about just this, and I just gotta edit that and I'll get that out to you guys. So I'm gonna size this real quick, push this in, and it just barely kissed it. Um, not really gonna be able to see that, but it's all good. Get the drill out of the way. And so now that is trimmed. I always double check my brass because I do like to shoot precision on this. Okay. So I'm about, it's 1.507. So I'm 0.03 short, but that's okay. I'm not that precise. And so from now, or for now, what, what this has done, because it's a flat blade that has trimmed this, it kind of makes a flatter edge as opposed to a very tight upright edge. It kind of dulls the edges a little bit. And so from there, I use my Lyman prep station. And we're gonna chamfer and deburr. So you chamfer the inside of the case mouth with, right here. I'll do another video on this too. Um, you deburr the outside of it here. I always clean it up with this brush. And then there's X2 extra stations here. Here I have a primer pocket uniformer. Um, generally I'll also have, I won't have that, but I'll have, like if I'm doing 223, I find a lot of military brass for sale. I grab that up. If there's a crimp, you can decrimp it there, but this uniforms the primer pocket. Um, in testing, I've not seen a big difference in that, but if you've got the station, why not? And then after that, I clean the primer pocket. So I'm gonna turn this on. So now I'm gonna take care of the inside of the case mouth, and I'm not putting very much pressure on there. And I take care of the outside of the case mouth, and it's, it's really shiny. You can see a very clear, distinct edge on this. It looks really good. Clean the inside of the brass. And I'm going to, well, it didn't do anything for uniforming, didn't even touch it. Because it's pretty uniform, it's twice fired now. And then I just cleaned it. And so, this is almost as clean as a brand new piece of brass now. And so I've got that step out of the way, I trimmed it, I prepared the case mouth. And these tools are actually available with hand tools too. You don't have to run out and buy all this expensive stuff. I think this was 140 or 110. I don't know, but you don't have to do all that, okay? Um, the next step is to put a primer in it. I use this RCBS contraption here. It's got a plunger in here. It's got the case holder that holds this case, and it's got a, a hole right there in the center. I can't decide which light is better. So when I squeeze this, a primer is gonna come up and get into that primer pocket. So that's the next step. I also have a press mounted one. I don't love it, it's okay. Um, I, I just don't like it. I like to do this, I like to take my time when I'm trying to get some precision out of it. And so with this, um, these are primers, they can pop. I've never had one happen. Never had one blow up on me whether I'm using the press or whether I'm using this handheld unit. But now I can protect my eyes. I could get burned on the face but I'm also not looking down on the case like this when I'm, when I'm priming it. Um, when I prime this, I make sure the, seat, the case is seated correctly. As soon as I get a little bit of tension on it, I hold it away from me and I prime it. 
Just like that, it's done. Um, once you get used to that and how that feels, you're gonna know if that feels right every time you do it. Um, that went in super smooth and I really, really like that. So let me close this off and put this back. So now I've only got a couple steps left. I'm missing powder and a bullet. And so we'll jump over here after I clear off my bench. I'm gonna pull out the Frankfurt Arsenal IntelliDropper and show you how I throw powder for this. And so hang tight. All right, so now we're ready and set up for the Frankfurt Arsenal IntelliDropper to drop some powder for this bullet, or for this cartridge. And so I'm gonna do 28 grains of 8208 XBR, which is already in here. I've already calculated and calibrated the scale so that we know this, the weight is on and this is measuring correctly and that it's recognizing how fast it's dispensing powder. And so I'm gonna put it on manual mode so it'll only do one charge at a time. And I'll type in 28 because that's gonna be my load. And then I push start. It stopped at 27.4, it knew how to do that and it's already at 28 grains and it's already stable. So from there I take my powder funnel Grab the powder, I dump it into there. If this was on auto mode, as soon as I put it down, it'll start to fill it again if I'm gonna do a whole bunch of cases. That's normally how you would do something like that. There are options for press mounted and tabletop mounted powder dispensers. There's pros and cons to each one of them. This one is actually a tiny bit slower, but it is a lot more precise. So I'm going to take that, and I've absolutely loved working with this, and I'll have another video coming out on this pretty soon. And so from here, we need to put a bullet in here, and then we're gonna be done. And so, we're gonna take it back out of here, get you over to the press, and get that bullet, bullet loaded up. All right, so our next step is we're gonna put a bullet into the case. So I'm gonna secure the case here. I like case holders because I've got powder in here, I don't want it to go everywhere. So, in essence, what I'm doing right now, I need to figure out how to make this seat this bullet at 2.265 total overall length. There are other ways of measuring bullet length and cartridge length and all that. We're gonna do overall length, tip to tail. And so what I've done, because I'm not 100% sure that I, I remember what bullet I loaded last because I used four or five different types of bullets, I've backed this cedar die out and consult your manufacturer's specifications for your particular dies. But I backed it out so I'll load it long. I can measure it and readjust it. Put my case in my case holder, hold the bullet here or just set it on here and I gently run this up, I make sure I bottom it out, and I come back up. I am at 2.35, so I'm really long. It's, it's pretty long, it even looks long. I wish I could, I could do that far, but I can't. So I got about a quarter turn on the die, come back, do it again, and I start doing this until I get closer. That's 2.32. So now I know that didn't go down very much, so I'm gonna go a half turn almost, and I can barely feel it touching that bullet and pushing it down a little bit further, and you notice I'm measuring between each one. Now I'm at 1.285, so I've got a little bit further to go, and I'm not rushing it. This is a very precise measurement that you're trying to get here. All right, that only took it down to 2.275. They do make my micrometer dies, they go here, but they are much, much more expensive. 2.265 on the money. And so that's where I'll be. Even though I'm gonna do more rounds, I'm gonna always measure that to make sure that that is the absolute length that I want. This is what I have found to be the most accurate. And that concludes how to load. Um, if this has not been um, 100% <laughs> inclusive on what you're looking for, drop me a message and I'll try to give, get you some more information. But this is how I reload. Um, if I've left out a step, I'll, I'll try to go back over these videos and say, hey, I left this out or whatever, but I'm gonna do a video on the trimmer that I use, I'm gonna do a video on the case prep station, and I'm gonna do a video on the IntelliDropper. And so I'm just, you know, I'm retired. Yes, I have a lot of time, but this isn't my number one thing that I do. But I do love this. And I love the feedback that you guys are giving me, so please, please, please keep that up. And I'll have all those videos coming out soon. I've got some more videos about the chronograph results and things like that coming out this week. And so with that, um, I will double check this video 
Hopefully everything's good. If not, I'll probably just splice in another one. But with that, have a great day. Stay tactical.